The University of Notre Dame will cover murals in a campus building that depicts Christopher Columbus in America. This is just so emblematic of, uh, of the way that cowardly Christians deal with things these days. Reverend John Jenkins, president of Notre Dame. What he's doing, uh, he's not getting rid of the murals, so he's not going to just throw them away. Instead, he's going to cover the murals, and he indicated that sometimes maybe for, he would uncover them on, on certain occasions, and then eventually they'll find somewhere else on the campus to put the murals. So they're not getting rid of them, they're going to put them somewhere else. So what he's done here, and th this, is this is just what cowardly Christians always do, he he's come up with a compromise that actually satisfies no one. So he's caving to pressure from, from the left, from society, from the world. He's caving to the pressure, but he's not even doing what they want. So they're still going to be mad at him. And then meanwhile, um, those who don't want him to cave are also going to be mad. So he's just upset everyone and accomplished nothing. This is what happens when you start trying to compromise and you give up on your principles and you start caving and surrendering and everything. It's, it, you're, you're not even going to satisfy the people who are coming after you. The people who you are bowing before and saying, oh, yes, yes, please, please, oh, ma dear master, master. The people that you're doing that to, they're not going to be happy. So you just end up, you end up with, a, it's a lose-lose. Meanwhile, this, I, I'm not going to get off on another tangent about Christopher Columbus, but as someone who's actually read about him and, and studied Columbus, I still find him to be one of the great men of, of Western civilization, obviously one of the pioneers and initial builders of Western civilization. Not a perfect man, a complex man. And men who did great things at any point in history, but especially back uh, back in those days, the great men who did great things and accomplished great, they were always complex. They always had sides to them that were um, less, shall we say, savory. And part of that is because if, if, you, if you wanted to get on a ship with a bunch of other guys and sail across uncharted waters and go to this uh, unknown wilderness and try to build a civilization from scratch, which is something that none of us, we can't even conceive of that. None of, none of us have ever done that or ever seen that happen. We, we can't even wrap our minds around what that even entails. To get on a ship with a bunch of supplies and then say, you know, we're going to just sail and hope that we find land and we're going to build a civilization. How about that? None of us can even, I mean, all the people that sit there and say, well, he shouldn't have done it that way. Well, he shouldn't have done that. That part right there, that was no good. Uh, meanwhile, none of us, we can't even find our local Rite Aid without a, without a GPS. And we're sitting here criticizing. In, in order to do that, you had to have certain characteristics. And you also had to be a very harsh and severe sort of man. And, and, and also brutal. It was kind of necessary. Now, that doesn't ex excuse uh, the bad things that Columbus did or the bad things that anyone did throughout history. But it does put it within a certain context. That if you want to be an intelligent person and you want to study history and you want to have a mature perspective on history and not a childish one, then you have to understand the context. Christopher Columbus, the early explorers, discoverers, pioneers, settlers, these are the people who built the civilization that you and I now live in. And we are enjoying the fruits of their labor. We are feasting on the banquet that they provided us. And even as we do that, like brats, we sit and we whine about them and complain and insult them. Well, you know, I know it's a cliche to say, if you don't like it, get out of America. But sometimes I think that response is um, wholly appropriate. And I think it goes, I, I think it applies to this. Unless, unless you're a hypocrite or an intellectual coward, if you really think that, um, that our civilization is built fundamentally on genocide and evil and slavery and all these things, if that's really what you think, and you think we have no right to even be here, and we stole all this land and we're thieves and criminals and everything, then you should leave. Uh, for you to think that and yet stay here and benefit from the privileges that those genocidal maniacs gave you, that makes you just incomprehensibly cowardly.